If you want to get into the retro gaming on an arcade machine, there are many different ways to play. In China, they produce quite a lot of different versions when it comes to two player, four player, with trackball, without a trackball. But in today's video, we are going to take a close look at the tabletop that I found with this company called Custom Arcades. So let's take a close look at it and how is the overall quality? So as a child, I grew up with arcades like maybe a lot of you. But besides that, I can still remember an uncle of mine had a tabletop at home. And that was one of the first times in my life as a child that I came across these things. I was always like fascinated by it, but back in the day we were only having one particular game in it, and it was Mappy. They had the PCB that he can interchange with Pac-Man, and that were the only two games he had. And now we have so many crazy machines that can have so many new features. With the built-in Pandora's Box DX, this thing also comes with the Tate mode. In other words, we can switch between the two player where we can play your casual Street Fighter games and you can also switch between the Tate mode and of course having the monitor in the perfect position to play games like Mappy, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man and Galaga. When just holding the B button it switches between these modes but what I understand of this machine is that we don't have 4 player mode basically the sides are just using when you're having the Tate mode and we have quite a cool list of different kind of games you can play particularly a lot of cool classic ones. So when you're looking at the games I must say that they work pretty damn great. So I noticed if you're going to press player 2 at the beginning and automatically it will switch back to the other player if player 1 dies. Nevertheless it works pretty damn good. Here you can see like both joysticks are mapped to player 1. So if you want to play with 4 players that is not possible when you're using the different mode. Here you can see that it works pretty damn well and it automatically switches back to player number 2. So with the vertical games, take consideration that we do have a big list that we can actually play. I'm not going to scroll through it fully, just wanted to show you a quick overview. A lot of cool classic ones that are absolutely epic to play this way. The only weird thing is I've noticed you have this tiny icon that says no flip screen games. And that is a problem because some of the games that don't flip but are two player makes it basically less unplayable. So we have like these very cool screenshots. At the right it also indicates the credits. But let's switch it back pressing the B button over here and holding it and it automatically switches to the different mode. And now we're actually just having a Pandora's Box DX with all of the cool games. Think about MAME, Neo Geo, PlayStation, the stuff that you have seen many times before on the two player arcade sticks. And if you have never seen those videos, check it out on the channel by the way. But the game list is a little bit of a messy and I mean particularly with a lot of double games, they still keep doing this. Doesn't really matter, but the three and four, that would be very cool. But unfortunate, that option is out of the question. In the settings we can set how you want to exit the game by pressing for example play one for a couple of seconds and that brings you automatically back some of the games maybe have the option to make a quick load quick save but with Pandora's Box DX it's just a hit or miss. <laughs> Oh, 
Another feature that's pretty damn cool and that is actually the trackball when it comes to these like say, arcade tabletop things. It's kind of cool they even have three trackballs in the machine here in the middle of course with play one and two and at the sides each player has their own trackball. But I can tell you you need to get used to it because it is really really freaking sensitive. <laughs> But how is it with the overall quality? So when you're looking at this wood, like say vinyl they're putting over it, it looks quite nice to be honest and gives it a very cool vintage look. The overall quality of the joystick is quite nice. It is like still a little bit of a wiggly to it. I prefer to have like sandwich joysticks. The buttons do have the long travel, the same we find a lot in let's say, different Pandora's boxes. But the trackball is absolutely amazing. And we do have the same kind of quality when it comes to the other sides of the players. Here at door number one where we open it up here we can find the power supply and the power supply is the new version in these machines and they does give a very nice punch it's way better than the cheap ones they had before they say they are double 300 watts but they also come implemented with a lot of weird like features including bluetooth yeah so if you like that you can even use it so far i can understand so at the other side here we can see the coin mechanism the speakers and the way how everything has been added they have very nice speakers in this machine and the audio itself sounds very nice and let's take a close look at door number two and here we find the coin mechanism and the collector bin or the wooden box where the coins will drop in yeah it's the same kind of stuff they're using most of the time over here we can find another on and off switch and the button over here having the Pandora's Box DX Gem Edition, that's the one they're using inside this machine itself. I think the most interesting thing is how they split up the controls. Then having over here the power supply, it's just your typical cheap power supply you're getting. And at the front at the bottom, there we're going to find the speakers. Yeah, when it comes to the display they're using, it's absolutely beautiful IPS display. And of course, we're going to need it because you're not going to sit at the front of the screen itself. You're always going to sit it from an angle. At the top we're going to get a very nice thick glass. So for the video I shut down the RGB lighting because it made me completely nuts. Personally I don't find it really great. I don't turn it on that often. But nevertheless we're going to get a remote where we have all kinds of features. We can turn it on and off. This is basically how it came when it was in demo. I really hate it. But you can put it on one color. That is slightly better. But you're still looking straight into the LEDs. And that is something I personally don't like. But it's an awesome feature. A simple feature. But okay guys, so when you're looking at the tabletop, I think it's a very cool piece of tech. You can just play on two different ways with two kind of different games. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell. And it will be great to see you in the next video.